The Spanish Elmo, it was a lever worth pulling. And Barca with flick ball are looking pretty damn good. You see, look, l let's keep it a stack. With all due respect to the, the, to the guy behind me, um, Hans, this was always going to be an upgrade on Javi. Always. Javi is a top 10, some may even say top 5, top 6 midfielder of all time. Amazing player, legend of the game, one of the most impactful, influential midfielders ever. As a coach, he sold fruits. Part-time. Not full-time, but part-time he sold fruits. So... Is Javi a good coach? He's decent. He's not a great coach. And he's not a guy that will ever be the greatest manager ever. He isn't what Barca thought Pep was going to be. Like, Pep is a much better manager than he was a coach. Whereas for Hansi Flick, Hansi, Hansi Flick is a really good coach. And don't judge him based on Germany. Because people will say, okay, he was outstanding for Bayern. But look at what he did for freaking Germany. <clears throat> I think for Germany, they're just going through a very difficult period where they just have really bad talent. And perhaps Hansi Flick's tactics and methods that works for Bayern at club level, perhaps they didn't work for Germany at international level. But what you've already seen from Barcelona is there's just a more professional approach to them as a team. And I think that Hansi Flick's experience throughout being at Germany, for what he, he did at, at Bayern, and being head coach for, for Germany, you're now seeing that experience come through. Because look, see, like, you don't play management. Coaching is something that comes with experience. And what I'm looking for this from this Barca side is that Flick, he has them looking like a real team. Because what do we always say in football? Yes, you need amazing players. Of course, you need the Lamani Emiles, you need the Lewandowskis, you need the Kubasas, you need those exceptions, you need the Pedris, you need those individual talents. But for winning stuff, specifically a league, it's chemistry and it's team. Because there's another team that is going to struggle with that. So yes, you need your individuals, but you also need to have a team ethos. You need to have cohesiveness. You need to have chemistry. And what is it from this Barca guys is a cohesive team because this is significant. Um, their win here, because Barca have not won at Raya Vaya, Vaya Kana, I think since 2018. So it's so this is even including messy times where they're not. So, so the significance of this victory shows you how they've actually made a forward step with Flick. The fact that this is a momentous win at a ground where Barca don't normally win. But look, let's, I mean, let's just guess. Let's, I mean, look, see, here's the thing. People were not sure whether um, Barca were going to get your boy the Spanish Elmo. The thing with the Spanish Elmo is, can he stay fit? If he can stay fit, it makes Barca better. Did Barca need him? No. You can never have too many good players. And that's the whole point. Specifically in the league, you want to have as many good players as possible. Real Madrid did not need Mbappe. Barca did not need the Spanish Elmo. But if you can get him, you get him. Because you want to have as many quality players as possible. For Barca specifically, they need help in that midfield. They need a replacement for Rafinha, who is not a Brazilian. So those are areas where they can improve upon. But the Spanish Elmo makes Barca better. He improves upon them. Like, that was a fantastic goal. And yes, it was a beautiful goal, set up by, by Yamal, turned around, left foot, bottom left hand corner. It was a absolutely amazing, amazing goal in what was a, a pretty tricky game away from home. But beyond just the goal is what he offers Barca specifically offensively. And you've seen this for Leipzig, and you obviously saw this for Spain, both at the last Euros before and the Euros that just passed, where in that final third, he just gives Barca another dimension. And if you now juxtapose this with your boy here, this was a loss. Barca definitely had a loss with Gundogan going away. But... Gundogan is much older than the Spanish Elmo. That's one. Two, Gundogan is a different profile. Gundogan, I think, is a better central midfielder in terms of the discipline of being in central midfield, keeping possession and decision-making for that role. Boom. But the Spanish Elmo 
is far superior in the final third. Who would I rather have in the final third? The Spanish Elmo or Gundogan? I'd rather have the Spanish Elmo in the final third because he's got better finishing. He understands what to do in that area and he's much more of an attacking threat. So Barca have not improved offensively. So what you now have is yet another weapon because you have Elmo, you have Lewandowski. You've, of course, you've got Yamal and you've got a Femi Lopez who looks really good. <clears throat> I mean, Lopez, that guy looks really good. And he's actually even improved upon coming from those um, Olympics for, for Spain. The less said about Rafinha, the, the better. I told you, Rafinha is a Brazilian who does not have a first touch. Rafinha is a Brazilian who uses PNP. Rafinha is a Brazilian who has no balance or any ball control. Rafinha is not Brazilian. He can't be. It's a lie. He's been lying to all of us. He was born on a plane flying over Brazil. He was not born on Brazilian soil. I refuse to believe that. Um, so, so look, this, this is huge. It's a great announcement. So here's the thing. If he can stay fit, because his injury record is tricky, if the Spanish Elmo can stay fit, this makes Barca very dangerous. and makes him very dangerous for this league. And yes, it was ruled out. It was. I thought it was a harsh foul for Jules Kunde. I thought that was a harsh foul. It was ruled, ruled out. But it was still a very good goal by Lewandowski. So I think that goal should have been given. And if it was given, yet again, he's now scored. So he would have, have scored in the three games for, for Barca. So ruled out, but still, you're seeing from Lewandowski that, bro, this guy's goal scoring is there. And it has to be a flick thing. Just how sharp he looks, how much of a goal threat he, he's looking at, and how he's now found the nets in three different matches I feel that Flick understanding him and knowing how to use him from his time at Bayern and where the ski in his final form was under Hansi Flick, I think that's understanding between Flick and Lewandowski is why he's had such a good start to this season. So if Lewandowski can keep playing like this and Flick using him like this, bro, midfield, defense, boom. But if you have a goal scorer that can give you 20 Gs, because where Lewandowski is going, he can give you 20 or more Gs. Bass are looking good. And here's my thing, bro. It's, it's still a long way to go. Injury, suspension, this and that. So it's still a long way to go, and there's still a long storyline. But I'm liking how Barcelona are looking. How they're looking is looking really good. If they can pull a few more levers just to bolster up the midfield, the defense, just add a few more options, Barca are a strong threat to win this league. Because people might not like me saying this, though. I don't believe Real Madrid are going to make, make, win this league because with Barca, it's, the, the, the team is it, it's working. The team is working. There's chemistry. There's understanding. They have an ethos. The team has cohesiveness and chemistry. Everyone understands everybody. Whereas for Real Madrid, and guys, we're going to be on Mbappé Watch. Guys, I'm going to be on Twitch. This Thursday, Las Palmas, we are doing Mbappe Watch because I'm the president of Mbappe FC. So it is my duty as the president, El Presidente of Mbappe FC to do an Mbappe Watch because he, Mbappe, he needs me. He needs me. So I'll be on Twitch, live freaking watch. I'm going to be doing a post-match hangout on your boy Mbappe because, he, because no. We're not having a situation where the Spanish Elmo outscores Mbappe. We're not having that. Nah, nah. We're not having a situation where Pedri outscores Mbappe. We're not having that. But the issue for Real Madrid is... I feel that Real are going to try to adjust to Mbappe, whereas Mbappe is the one that has to adjust to Real Madrid. So while Real Madrid are in this adjustment period, that gives Barca some space to keep saying what's up because Barca, that team works well. They're not trying to adjust. Just, bro, Elmo, Elmo has come in and he's fitted in like a glove. Like literally, it's as if he's been playing for Barca for ages. He's... Attacking midfield, looking forward, playing into that number 10 space. He has fitted in beautifully. So Barca have not had to change to adjust to Elmo. Elmo is like, bro, I know how this works. I fit in beautifully. Whereas for Real Madrid, Mbappe, it doesn't work. Real, Real are too, they have too many good players. Vini, Rodrigo, Jude Bellingham, Fede Valverde. They will win a lot of games because... They are the most talented squad on planet Earth. And when you're that talented, you're going to win a whole lot of games. But if your team doesn't have that key chemistry, 
That is where consistency can come against you. So the sooner Real Madrid figure out how to best to effectively use Mbappe and how to get this team working cohesively, consistently, the better. Because if not, it's going to be a very, very interesting La Liga race. Think about becoming a Football Hot member. If you're a desktop merchant, just click on the join button below, over here. Or if you're a mobile phone merchant, just click on the join button below the video over here and join the true elite content crack addicts. Peace.